This is history. After 1,079 chapters, after over 25 years, we finally get to see Shanks in a fight. And it features one of the most insane feats we've ever seen. The cover page of One Piece Chapter 1079 features Luffy watering a lion. It's much sillier than the Neo Mad storyline we just finished up, but there is something a little interesting about it. The sun. That's Big Mom's homie, Prometheus. Is this a hint that the former Yonko is still alive? Or maybe now that Luffy has his son god Nika form, Prometheus might actually like him. Either way, we open up to just a few hours earlier. Punk York is speaking to the Seraphim with some meat in her mouth. The problem she faces is that the world government wants to erase all of the Vegapunks, not just Stella. The problem isn't that her siblings will be in danger, she's only thinking of her own safety. She does have a plan to somehow counter this, but instead of revealing it, she orders the Seraphim to handle everyone else. Since the Frontier Dome was now closed, they were free to kill everyone except her, Stella, and the Cyperpol agents. Each of the Seraphim would confirm their understanding of the mission verbally, also confirming to us that all of them can in fact speak. Arching her back, York would further elaborate that once they begin their attack, everyone will question who gave the order. Knowing herself to be weak, York knew she'd be doomed if anyone found out the truth. Because of this, she ordered a snake to petrify her in front of the others, then undo it once they're gone. Which is why we don't see a snake immediately pursue them, and instead, just checks to confirm that they're gone. For as evil as this exchange may be, these two are pretty cute. Anyone else a York fan? I know everyone was focused on Lilith for a while, but now that York is actually doing stuff, I kinda like her. The last bit of this flashback would have York begin to mention an area of the lab that they shouldn't damage. If any of the Straw Hats manage to discover this blind spot, they may be able to turn this whole thing around. Again, we don't know this girl's plan yet. We know what she wants, to be a celestial dragon, and how she's keeping people from interfering. The Seraphim. But not how she'll avoid being killed too. She must be working on an offer the Gorosei can't refuse. In the present, having taken down her targets, S Snake rushes off elsewhere. Meanwhile, heeding the words of Sentomaru, the many inhabitants of Egghead Island would rush onto a ship in hopes of fleeing, while the newer model pacifistas continued their preparations. But as if the events of Egghead Island weren't already mounting up to be some of the craziest we've ever seen, looming close to it was a ship bearing the Jolly Roger of the Blackbeard Pirates. This would be terrifying enough under normal circumstances, but wasn't Blackbeard fighting Law and the Heart Pirates? This can't be good. The worst case scenario is that Blackbeard got his hands on Law's Ope Ope no Mi, otherwise known as the ultimate devil fruit. Normally, I would never consider the thought of a worst generation pirate with a 3 billion berry bounty being deleted so suddenly. But as we'll see in a few moments, that's not so unrealistic. Also, no way Blackbeard is York's backup plan, right? And listen, even if it's not Blackbeard himself, OKG being here could be even crazier. In fact, because this is pretty much Ohara Part 2, it's probably OKG for real. OKG versus Kizaru would go hard. But ahead of that, we have an epic fight right now, as elsewhere, just outside of Elbaf, Kid and his crew were in the midst of facing Shanks and his forces. It's here that we get our first look at Shanks' fleet. Padded Toe Garatini, captain of the Puddle Pirates, looks to be some sort of froggy fishman. Like Kawamatsu, he kinda looks like a kappa. Then there's Gravetooth Fugar, captain of the Social Club Pirates. He looks like he could have been childhood friends with Brooke. And lastly, Paniki Pururu, princess of the bourgeoisie pirates. She looks like she might be from the Tontata tribe. Suffice to say that these guys weren't exactly an intimidating display. They were so lame that Kid had to question if they were still in the new world. According to Killer, there were actually some famous faces among them, so they shouldn't let their guard down. But either way, Kid wasn't going to hold back. Shanks would then instruct his forces to clear their ships out of the way. He didn't want anyone on his side to get hurt. The news of his departure came as a shock to some of them, as they wanted to hang out longer, and would even cling to him. Shanks would admit that his visit to Elbaf was always intended to be a quick stop. But because he stuck around for too long, big players like Kid have been able to target him. And as Shanks got onto a ship, the members of his fleet would begin to laugh at how famously weak they are. It's thanks to the infamy of Shanks' flag that allowed them to live as they do. Again, Shanks proves to be quite a fan of charity. He's even kind enough to playfully joke around with his comrades. Once he was aboard, we'd see Lime Juice nearby as Lucky Rose claimed they could handle the Kid Pirates without their boss getting involved. But Shanks would remind them that despite their enemy's age, he's a pirate with a 3 billion berry bounty. To Yasop, Shanks would question if Kid's wounds from Wano have already healed. And Yasop, seeming to be their scout of sorts, confirmed that Kid looks fine and is eager for a fight. With that, Shanks was willing to deal with the young pirate. 
this to me is so cold. It is so subtle, but listen, these guys are professionals. They really do this pirate thing. If Shank spanks Kid while he's injured, this man will just pull up again for round 3, thinking that a bit more preparation will make a difference. Either that, or it would be unbecoming of him as a pirate of such infamy to face an already weakened opponent. In fact, Shanks is more interested to know if there are any updates on Blackbeard. They didn't have any, but they at least know that he's not on Hachinosu. Shanks assumed that Blackbeard would show up on Wano, but he didn't. Which might explain why Shanks and his crew were nearby to begin with. But now that Blackbeard might be on Egghead, what could this mean for those events? Anyways, Hongo would toss over some intel on Captain Kid over to his boss. This made it clear that Shanks has not been interested in Kid at all. Even after Kid lost an arm trying to hunt him before, he never cared to look into him. Shanks didn't even show himself last time. Only now does he learn that Kid is from the South Blue. He even describes him to be troublesome, having made it this far. At the same time, Kid and Killer would take stock of just how many ships they were facing at the moment. There were nine, and some famous faces were beginning to show themselves. Kid didn't care though. He was prepared to take them all down. Using the power of his Devil Fruit, Kid intended to destroy them all in 10 seconds flat. Remember that. 10 seconds. Here he prepared to fire his damned punk, an attack that was strong enough to even do damage to Big Mom. As he raided his weaponry, the many ships began to be pulled towards his overwhelming magnetism. This disturbance triggered Shanks' observation hockey. Immediately rushing into action in the face of this danger, Shanks would command the fleet to spread out, as the giants Dory and Brogi were told to lend him a hand. From there, we'd get a glimpse of the future Shanks saw from his hockey. It was a total massacre. Several ships would be destroyed at the same time. The carnage Shanks foresaw was too great. Looking at his boss, Ben Beckman could tell that the future he saw must have been pretty bad. If this shot went off, the majority of Shanks' fleet would have been wiped out instantly. A feat that even Shanks had to recognize. With this, he leapt across the sea, much to the surprise of an ill-prepared Captain Kidd. With this, Shanks made use of his former captain Goldie Rogers' signature technique, Kamusari. This overwhelming burst of Conqueror's hockey knocked out most of Kidd's crew, and absolutely annihilated their captain. Hydrogen Bomb versus Coughing Baby. This insane feat made it look like a massive bomb went off on Kid's ship. Kid and his forces were done for. With this move, Shanks just one-shot two members of the worst generation. The guy who not too long ago helped to finally take down Big Mom is on the ground, unable to speak or move. Only being able to beg for their lives, the remaining Kid Pirates would offer Shanks their road pony glyphs in exchange for the captain's life. But Shanks said nothing. He simply led the way as Dory and Brogy aimed an attack at Kid's ship. The Kid Pirates started this fight. The two giants were here to make sure that the fuck around to find out ratio remained proportionate. And with one big hulking swing, they super violated the Kid Pirates with one of the meanest double taps in One Piece, blowing a massive hole in it. I love this. Listen, I love this. Listen, the Yonko are not to be messed with. I love having them be the legendary Pokemon of the One Piece world. Kid is the Pikachu to Shanks' Mewtwo. Sure, Luffy and Buggy are goofballs, but this Yonko thing isn't to be taken lightly. And with that, Captain Kid and his Kid Pirates had been completely and utterly destroyed. Oda created this man based on one of the most infamous pirates of all human history, and used him as an overgrown demonstration of Shanks' power. Twice. Shout out to all the people that thought Kid could actually do anything here. You already know his fans will be fighting for their lives from now on. It looks like this might be the end of Useless Mid. He was already out like a light before being sent to the depths of the sea. Shanks is a nice guy, but not that nice. Kid wanted the smoke, and he got it. There can only be one redhead in the game. Now, I wonder if that bit of intel helped inform Shanks' future vision. Whatever the case, this guy is broken. One Piece clearly isn't ending this decade, because there's no way Zoro has to surpass this to become the strongest swordsman in the world. And this isn't even Mihawk. Shanks doesn't even have his dominant sword hand anymore. But hey, with this, Shanks is easily the strongest Yonko. And I mean that as just him. His fleet may be a bunch of bargain bin pirates, but his core crew is strong enough to balance things out. And this only makes me wonder how Blackbeard managed to scar his face without a devil fruit even more. Now, the last thing I need to make very clear to you all is that Buggy would tank this. I mean, he's been against and on a crew with some of the strongest Conqueror's Hockey users in history, and cutting attacks can't kill him. Respect the clown. As always, I'm Slice Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching, and have an awesome day. I love you.